Now, the dust has settled on Group F in France at the Women's World Cup. The USA at three wins out of three, closing out with a, a very good 2-0 victory over Sweden. Chile uh, finishing up with a win against Thailand. It's uh, Kate Margraf time. She is here, the former US uh, international. Kate, I won't get you to talk about the Sweden game, but let's look ahead as the knockout rounds are now upon us. And particularly for the US, it's a very interesting half of the bracket, isn't it? Talk about power-packed half of the draw. They've ended up, they got Spain in the round of 16, but my word, England as well in that half of the bracket. And of course, France. France, right, the four best teams in the world, England, France, United States, and Germany, and three of which are on the left-hand side of the bracket. Now, coming into the tournament, the question was, does the United States want to finish first? Mm. Do they want to avoid France, France in the quarterfinals? And the U.S. said, no, that's not our mentality. It'll actually hurt us moving forward. We're not going to play the game of bracketology because somehow that always bites you in the butt, mm. is, is their feeling, and they want to earn this World Cup championship. So they decided to win. They played dominant. Dominant. They played mm. well, had a lots of players, getting time and scoring key goals. So this is a yeah. team that's going into the knockaround fairly confident. Do you foresee any upsets in the round of 16 at all, or is it going to be the four favorites on a collision course in, yeah. in, in the no. quarterfinal? I don't see any upsets. I don't. No. I think Germany is getting stronger, England's getting stronger, as well as France. And that's what you want to see from the top teams, and that's the reason why they win it, is they get a little bit of that momentum. They need to avoid injuries to some of their key players. They need their goalkeepers to continue to have strong performances. But if they're able to do that, I do not foresee any upset as Norway and Australia, they're just going to battle it out. England should easily beat Cameroon. France will beat Brazil. It's a side that's decimated, not very deep, a little bit tired and one of the oldest teams in the tournament. And the United States is going to have to handle Spain, who will have more possession of the ball, mm. but don't have that ruthless instinct. So they should be able to capitalize because we're more efficient than they are. Paul, how are you feeling about the Lionesses? England I'm, I'm, uh, playing Cameroon next. I'm feeling absolutely fantastic about yeah. the Lionesses. I mean, look. I mean, look. <laughs> Three, three games, three wins. What yeah. more can you ask for? I, I totally agree with Kate and the, the mentality of the US national team. You, you don't want to play bracketologist. She says you, you, you don't want to be too cute, too clever. Mm. What's in front of you? Just steamroll them, win, mm. win the game and just go on to the next game. That's how you build your confidence. That's what happens in the squad. The squad gets stronger. The manager's... Uh, um, is, is the way she will get stronger with the mm. way that she's managing the squad. Mm. So just keep on going. It's, it's a fantastic bracket, that. Uh, any chance it is not an England-USA semi-final? Again, looking at that, yeah. that's what the part seems to lead yes. with. But France, yes. of course, are going to have a say. You know what? France is playing really, really well. And France's strengths are our weakness. They are very, very good and fast on the wings going forward. And our outside backs, and today especially, got caught out a little bit, especially our left-hand side. That's a very strong side for France. Mm. So that's something that I wonder how Jill Ellis and the U.S. Women's National Team is going to adjust because you have to accept other teams maybe better than you in certain areas. How are they going to handle that? France to beat the U.S.? No! Yeah. No! Look what I'm wearing, Adrian. I've got blue I've got blue ankle killers. I've got a red dress on. Heck no! Well, you mentioned Germany. Eh? When you look at the other half uh, of the bracket, okay, uh, Netherlands are there, Canada there, Germany, but it does seem to be the slightly easier route through, doesn't it? Right, and that was the argument. So Sweden happily came second in the U.S.'s group because that means it put them over on this right-hand side, and they're going to have to face Canada. So this is definitely the easier side. Netherlands takes the group. They had, If they had even tied the game today, they would have gone in and advanced as top of the group. Really, Netherlands, Japan, they should outpower Japan. Japan struggles with their young team handling the physicalness. China bunker defensively mm. tough Italy should beat them Germany will beat Nigeria and Sweden Canada that's just going to be a yellow card fest yeah. I'm excited that's just going to be <laughs> full knockdown and, punch in it's and all that's, in there and that's Sweden's prize for, for losing against the US is they end up in this this half of the bracket with Canada, Canada yeah but next. you want that bracket yeah. Yeah. I, oh, mean, I mean I, I will happily take Canada over Spain to be honest right right yeah any any upsets you foresee no, no. no. I, I, I think, in, in all honesty, and again, going back to the initial half of the bracket, or the first half of the bracket, where the U.S. is, I, 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 if I'm the U.S., I don't fear France. And I no. understand as hosts and, and coming into the tournaments as favourites. But I don't, think, um, I don't think some of their good performances have transferred in, into results. I think the U.S. have a little bit of a chip of their shoulder after mm -hmm. the criticisms against, yeah. for that game against Thailand. For more, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus.